today's lecture speaks about uh, soil classification. Uh, soil classification means that we need to classify the soil, to put each type of soil in a group, to study the properties of each type. Uh, this here is similar to what we have said before uh, uh, just a while ago. Uh, soil is a, a, a different uh, subject. It's not like uh, concrete, it's not like steel. It's, it's a different subject. It's God's creation. Uh, it is made of different materials with different percentages. It's never the same in any place. In, in one location, you will find, if you find one layer, it does not mean that each point of the layer has the same uh, properties. It may vary. So that's why we need to uh, find a way to study this type of soil. Uh, how can we do this? Uh, we need first to determine the soil components. If I need to, 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 to classify the soil, then I need to study what is it made of, what are the types of the soil groups. Determine the properties of the soil. Each type, I need to study the properties of this type. Determine the portions of soil, because if I have, say, three types of soil, if I mix them equal quantities, it will give a mix. If I mix them to, uh, one to one to three, it's a, it's a different mix, mi mixture. One to one to four, it's another mix, and so on. So what are the, 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 prop, uh, the, the, the percentages of each type in the major component? Determine the effect of each component on the other component. Maybe if two components come together, they will have a different behavior than if, if each one uh, is alone. Determine the mechanical properties that determine the soil strength to various strengths. So I need the mechanical uh, properties of each type. Because why mechanical? There are many properties for soil. There are mechanical, physical, chemical, uh, but I'm not as an engineer, what really matters with me is the mechanical properties. If a, a, in some cases, the chemical properties would uh, uh, help me in limited cases. But the major target for me is to study the mechanical properties because I need the strength of the soil. So it's the mechanical properties. Then I have to find the methods of designing structural element uh, connected to the soil. So I, I knew everything about the soil, what I'm going to do with it, then I have to put these in equations to design my, uh, the, 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 the soil and the interaction with the uh, structure. In this term, we will start by finding the properties of the soil, the con constituents of the soil, and the equations used to drive uh, uh, properties from one another or designing something, but we are not going to go into the design of the structure itself. This will be postponed till uh, next year, John. Uh, this is the normal shape of the soil. The normal shape of the soil is that it, it consists of big particles, say the sand. And uh, maybe the, 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 there are uh, smaller particles called the silt, very small particles called the clay, and so on, there are something called organic uh, matter. But uh, wh wh what I mean is that soil is composed of three major things, solid particles, Regardless of the size, maybe big, small, medium, 
I, I don't care now, but it is solid particles or liquid, which is the water inside the, 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 the constituent, uh, inside the soil itself, and voids, which is air. So, soil is something called a three phase system. It's, it, it consists, it's, it's not like uh, steel or uh, concrete, no, it is a three-phase system. It contains solids next to water or liquid next to earth with different percentages. So if I want to study this bulk in an engineering way, then I have to transfer it into this shape. Imagine that you have taken all the solid particles, group them together, all the liquid particles, group them together, and the remaining will be the air around you. So these are the three constituents of the soil. What do I need from these three constituents? I need the weight and the volume. So I need to study for this solid, WS, which is the W of the solid, Vs, which is the volume of the solid, and so on, w, the WW, which is the weight of the water. Here, just t take into consideration that we have here something called W air. What is the weight of the air? Zero. So, so, so W air, we usually omit it and do not use it because uh, air has no uh, weight, but it has volume. Air can, can occupy space, but the volume is zero. So these are the, 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 the three major things. This is the three-phase uh, diagram. This three-phase diagram, no, no, now I, I will try to leave this shape, which is the normal shape of the soil, and go into the three-phase diagram, because the three-phase diagram is something that I can deal with as an engineer because I can put it later into equations. If I have V, uh, uh, say here, I know VW, I know V water, I know v, uh, VS, I know WS, and so on. If I know these values, I can put it in equations and I can start solving a problem. But here, how come uh, can I use them in solving, solving what? I, I don't know. It's just, this is sim similar to what you have studied in geology. Just some description. Soul, uh, silt, uh, sand, clay, that's all. But uh, th this is not enough for me. I, 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 as an engineer, I need numbers. So I cannot get the numbers from this. So starting with the three phase diagram that consists of air, water, and solid, then I have to study the possibility of this three phase diagram. Can it be a two phase diagram? Yes. Of course, it should include the solid, because if there is no solid, then it's not soil. If you don't have soil particles, then it's not solid. Soil. So I, all, I will always have the solid. But in some cases, I may have all the voids full of water, which is the case of fully saturated soil. If I take a soil sample, put it in the water for a week, do you expect that there are still uh, voids inside? No, all the, the, the air bubbles will go outside and water will, will, will come. So it will be a two-phase diagram consisting of water and solid. Or the air uh, portion will be replaced with water. The opposite. Take the sample, instead of putting it in water, put it in the oven water will evaporate and the remaining will be only the solid particles. So it will be a two-phase diagram consisting of solid and air. So I have either dry soil or fully saturated soil or the normal case which is soil in, as a three-phase diagram consisting of the three things together. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the same uh, drawing. Uh, this is air, uh, water, and solid. And, and we said that take care that air has no 
vo uh, weight, so we, I don't have something called W. Uh, if I tell you what is the weight of this sample, the weight of this sample is WW, which is W water plus W solid. That's all. I, I don't, uh, but if I tell you what is the volume of this sample, it will be the sum of the three volumes. Now we can start with these numbers to try to reach some kind of equations. If I tell you, say, what is the tot uh, total weight of the sample? You will tell me total weight is WW plus, plus WS. This is, uh, the, now we started to have equations. The, the, this is the beginning. The beginning of engineering is to transfer description into numbers or, or equations leading to numbers. If I tell you what is the water content or the moisture content of the, of the sample, we have something called a definition for moisture content. Moisture content is the weight of water compared to the weight of solid. So, WW, and, and so on, I, I will just, uh, uh, but he, here you have to take into consideration, if I s tell you that I have water content of zero, it means I have dry soil, which is this case. If I tell you that I have water content not equal to zero, then it is the normal case of the three-phase diagram. There is another now we are, we, we, we've taken the three-phase diagram and we are trying to get out of this three-phase diagram all the definitions that will be needed in future in any design case for any soil material in any problem. So I have to define everything. I have to try to find all the parameters that may be needed for me or for others in their design for uh, any structure. Uh, they propose something called void ratio. Void ratio means the percentage of voids in the sample. So percentage of voids in the sample is V void, which is the volume of voids divided by the volume of solid. What is V void? We did not say it. V void is the total. Here, water. Where is water found in a sample? Water is found, is found inside the voids uh, of the sample. So if I tell you what is the total volume of the voids, it is the volume of air plus the volume of water because part of the void is full of water and the other part is still air. So if I tell you what is the volume of void, the volume of void is the volume of air plus the volume of uh, water. So this is E. Uh, something very important, E cannot be equal to zero. Why? Because it is impossible to have solid uh, uh, soil without voids. Impossible. Because uh, how can you imagine that you have uh, uh, balls? Uh, or something like this. Put it in, in, a, in a box. There should be voids in the, inside this box because they are, they are not fit together. They cannot fit together. Sides cannot fit together. They are of different shapes. So E cannot be equal to zero, but E can be equal to more than one. Because here, you may have voids more than the amount of solid. The more the voids, by the way, this is something, uh, it needs somebody to think. If I tell you that the, 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 the void ratio of two samples, one sample has void ratio more than the other. Do you expect that the one with more voids is stronger or weaker? Weaker. Void, void ratio E means the percent, the, 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 the voids. The, the, uh, why the soil is strong? It is strong not because of the voids, it's strong because of the solid particles. 
If I have very small voids, it means that it is compacted. If I take uh, some uh, sand, I compact them. What I'm going to do when I compact a sample? I am putting, put, pushing the, the particles to come nearer to each other to make smaller voids and uh, uh, so, so the void ratio will be decreased. So, by the way, this is one thing that is very important when we study compaction, when we go to a site and we need to compact the, the, the soil before putting the building on top of it. So we need to decrease the void ratio. So uh, the, the, I, I want you to understand that now we are uh, uh, studying uh, uh, the, the, uh, how to uh, uh, transfer uh, data to be used in future design. Uh, this is the void uh, ratio. Uh, there is something also called porosity. What is the difference between void ratio and porosity? You'll find that the difference here, E, it was V void, the total void over the solid, two different parts. But here, V void divided by V total, the total. So it is something like a percentage. So it is always less than one. So both are the, the, the same, but instead of saying uh, this portion to this portion, no, this portion to the total. That's all. Uh, yani I, I will try now to go a little bit uh, faster, but just describing what are these degree of saturation. What is degree of saturation? Degree of saturation, SR, is the volume of water divided by the volume of void. And so on, uh, uh, you, you just need to understand these uh, relations because when you come in a problem later while studying or in, uh, in, the, uh, in the field uh, when you work, you may have some properties and you need to drive other properties. So the only way is to substitute using these properties in, in a big equation or one equation to, to, to reach the other, uh, the other property and so on. So SR is the volume of water divided by, this is the amount of water, divided by the total void. So it is, it gives you a, a, an impression of the degree of saturation. If I tell you that V water uh, divided by V void is one, it means that it is fully saturated. No, no air. But if I tell you that it is zero, then it is dry. So now, Instead of saying description, sand, clay, dry, wet, we say numbers. Uh, uh, 0.5, uh, SR equal 0.5. I don't need to give a description. You know what, what it is. And I will be very precise because if I tell you that it is saturated, you will tell me how much. Is it very saturated or uh, not very saturated? But if I tell you that SR is 0 0.7, 0 0.715, very precise. I, do, I don't need to give you more details. So that this is engineering. Engineering is changing description, a big paragraph into one number. You take this number, you know everything. Specific gravity. Uh, specific gravity is GS. GS, it means it is gamma solid by gamma water. This is another uh, 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 equation. Uh, gamma water, you have to, 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 to remember this. It is, uh, the value is, is one ton per meter cube. It is one gram per centimeter cube, it is 10 kilo newton per meter cube. Because in, in many cases, gamma water, especially in the exam, I found some, uh, 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 the, uh, 
what is the value of gamma water that we are going to use? It, uh, you have to memorize it as an engineer. You have to know it. It's not, uh, it's, it's not difficult. Uh, actually, it is not 10. It is 9.81, uh, the G of the, uh, yeah. But uh, for, for uh, simplicity, we use it as, as t uh, 10. Uh, bulk density, uh, bulk density is the, uh, uh, from definition, bulk density. So the density of the whole formation. What is the density of the whole formation? Density is the weight divided by the volume. So it is the total weight divided by the total volume. The, the soul. And so on uh, dry densities, uh, uh, yani, I, I, I'm not just going to um, uh, read it uh, one by one. I just say the, 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 the definition. Uh, saturated uh, density, this is the equation given. Uh, the, the, this, by the way, is, is one of the equations that you may use in, uh, in the exam. Uh, of course, you don't have to memorize it, it will be uh, given to you. But through this equation, you can find a relation between the saturated density, knowing the value of E and the value of GS. So if I know the value of E or the value of GS, suppose you don't know the value of E, go up here. What is the value of E from here? Uh, here E is V void divided by V solid. So if you know V void and V solid, divide them by each other and get the E, go to the other equation, use the substitute and so on. So uh, you will end up after this lecture having lots of relations that you may need in any case of design. Oh, uh, th th there is something called effective density uh, of soil. It means that if I have something below water, it is the, 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 the sample is below water, this portion. Here it is below water. If I have here a sample that is above water and another sample that is below water, we usually use something called submerged weight. Uh, did you hear about submerged weight before? Usually they tell you, uh, if you want to get the submerged weight of something, uh, get the, 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 the weight and just subtract from it the uh, uh, density of water. Because what happened is that water uh, helps in pushing the sample up. So it reduces the weight or reduces the density. So it reduces the density by something called the pressure of water. And the pressure of water is, uh, we, we, we can calculate it because the pressure of water depends on the uh, uh, gamma of the, uh, of the water. Usually uh, the pressure is gamma multiplied by H, which is the, the, the height. So it depends on the, uh, 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 the gamma of, or the density of water. And so on, these are all just equations. Uh, uh, this page contains all the equations that you may need in your uh, design for things related to that. Of course, we can go into each one of these and find how we reach this form of the equation, but we, we are not studying mathemat uh, mathematics. We are studying geotechnical engineering, so we uh, are interested in the final shape of the equation that we are going to use. If you would like to prove it, 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 it would be very easy to prove. Uh, as an example for proving it, uh, this is an example. Prove that uh, the, the, uh, n equal e uh, divided by 1 plus e. Uh, substitution. Uh, n is v uh, volume divided by v total. So uh, v total is v solid plus v void. And so on, substitute in the equation, you will end up with 
e divided by 1 plus e. We can do the same for any equation, any of these equations. We can, uh, you, you, you remember in algebra, uh, in mathematics before, you, they usually tell you prove that this equal to this and you start making a big problem ending up with what you need. So uh, th th this is, uh, th th this equation we proved here and you can do the same for, for any e equation, but we don't want to waste the time in uh, 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 mathematics. Uh, a problem here, and it is uh, uh, a different type of pro problem, a soil sample has water content, and it is given, and specific gravity, and it is given, and the bulk unit weight, also is given. Determine its void ratio, porosity, and degree of saturation. So now you have you started to have problems. Uh, uh, some parameters you know, some parameters you need to know. So you have to choose which equation will help you to reach what you want. If I start with this equation, I have everything except E. Then I can get the E. If I get the E, then I can get n using another equation. If I know the n, then I can reach SR and so on. I'm just, uh, I, th this is uh, uh, just a silly problem. It's, it's, it's nothing, but it, it tells you that knowing some parameters, you can reach all other uh, parameter easily if you know uh, the equation. Uh, the, the next part of the lecture will be index, index uh, something called index properties. I uh, will stop here to take a few, uh, few minutes for rest and then uh, continue again.